Okay, um, so this is the forensic part. This is where I really, um, oh, hey, be, before you come to the US, if, if you can walk through and we can look at some of these details, particularly it's the roof. Um, if we, I don't know where I had the picture of, I'm sorry to flash through. Um, you can see there's this sort of- How he connect, right? Yeah, but it's built differently. He's got two mm -hmm. roofs here, a lower connecting roof and an upper roof. And in the, in the contemp in the pictures I see from the outside, it's, it's one roof. So, and this, these are the two poche spaces. And so, so this space is of great interest to me because it's, it has to do all that work. I, I heard it, sir. It's the, the one, it, it's supposed to be the, the area that it leaks also, look at Of this. course, of <laughs> course, look at it, it's a disaster. <laughs> Looks like sure. If they're consulting you, this is the critical area. <laughs> of course, it's the Achilles yeah. heel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop at section two now. Um, Okay, and, and the the last section, um, I get a little more personal and, and interpretive, um, and also um, bring in another Princeton colleague, Keller Easterling, um, and reference her recent book um, called Medium Design. And uh, can we look at the Jim Thompson Villa as medium design or as medium? Uh, so borrowing from Keller Easterling, I wanted to talk about the Jim Thompson House as medium design. Easterling helps us understand the Jim Thompson House, not just as form and meaning, but as a stage for the interplay of the flows and forces of social and natural processes. If the Renaissance Villa was a medium to display the power of an aspiring aristocracy to impress a Pope with their control of nature and the peasant countryside, Jim Thompson Villa was an American's attempt to elevate craft and tradition within the vibrant nature of an industrialized tropical Thailand. In addition to medium design in the East and Easterling's contemporary sense, the ghosts of Jim Thompson House spoke to me in the Thai spiritual sense. This leads me to personalize this argument about architecture, nature, and power. And I've delved into my own archive specifically my graduation architecture thesis at Princeton, the school that Jim Thompson attended as an undergraduate in the 1920s. Uh, in that thesis project from 1981, I attempted to deconstruct the colonial legacy of the Italian villa in American architecture, notably in the slave labor plantation complexes of the American South. The archives at Princeton include evidence of the institution's complicity with slavery, as it was the first choice for the education of the antebellum slaveholding class, with most of the students before the Civil War being from slaveholding states. So um, as an undergraduate, I read um, James Ackerman's book on Palladio and it inspired me um, when I did a summer studies in Paris to take the month after that to um, travel and visit the villas, hitchhiking around the Veneto. So I got to see wow. um, most of the villas and you know meet some crazy Italian drivers. <laughs> <laughs> Must be very crazy by then. And the villa that impressed me the most um, is Villa Barbaro. Oh. Yeah. Um, in Maser, um, and um, not, uh, and and so um, what what's always amazing is that they're presented in his five books always as these symmetrical structures, um, and but when you go to the villa, you don't approach it from the middle. That would you know, you you come from the road. 
Oh yeah, you have to go across. Yes. And then you there's a church at the end of that road. You see this church here? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Also designed by Palladio. Yeah, yeah. And at that church, you uh -huh. come in here and climb up a little hill to where you get out of your car now, but where you get off your horse and, and carriage at the time. So the entry is in this quarter, which ah, split. Okay, so it's not exactly from the front. No, and then when you're in this cruciform room, of course, you're looking, it's for the view. The front is for the, the view, the theater, right? Of the farm okay. and the workers. And, okay. there, and there's stables and all sorts of uh, the vats, the barrels for the wine and, and, and the pochet of the building, but the, you know, the living rooms of the house. And there were two brothers who built this. The Barbaros were brothers. And so one had one sort yeah. of rooms and one had the other. But um, I was interested that Palladio kind of made this mirroring plan where he, there's um, the, the hills, this, the, all the villas are in the the foothill line of the Alps. Um, so mm -hmm. it's very flat. It's the Po River Valley and um, all the rivers that drain into the Venice Lagoon. And then you have the foothills and then the Alps. And you see the Alps on a clear day from Venice. Um, and so there's a natural spring here. It's a spring line. Mm -hmm. And so these grottos with the water, the spring water in them are an important part. And so there's a forest right behind it. And then, of course, the farm. And so, um, you know, what... Um, David Cawthon taught me is to look at um, a villa as, a, as in a farming landscape. It's an urban person going to a farm um, and um, remake, remaking a village, <laughs> a peasant village into a mm -hmm. kind of landowner gentry farm. Um, and so, um, but then there's a respect for nature. And so there's always this sort of presence of a natural spring or the source of water. Um, which needs to be protected. And so, um, uh, so my, uh, oh, and this, this Google view I just took, you can see how you enter into that side corridor. Mm -hmm. And here's the grotto in the back with the hill and the forest in the mm -hmm. spring. And here's the terrace that overlooks the farm and the two brothers, one brother, two brothers. <laughs> um, so I was, I was thinking about, I just, just described the veranda as a corridor. Mm. So I was in with the, I described the grotto under the house and the terrace here. And um, all his gardening plants came to bust and it just is one big jungle now. And, and William Warren has this, or one of his letters describes how he gave up trying to have a lawn in the front. And so you have the jungle on the one side, you have the canal on the other side, you have the terrace, you have this corridor. And so this flipping of inside outside. So my interpretation, if you can see, I kind of played with Palladio's drawing a little bit. Okay. Yeah, you can, yeah. you can see there's this mm. built villa with the terrace overlooking the farm and all the and mm -hmm. the cruciform mm -hmm. is the important public room. And you get that by going down that corridor and up these stairs. Um, and then you're on the second floor and you're in this water um, grotto area mm -hmm. and so i i interpreted it as having you know one exterior <laughs> villa and one mm -hmm. interior villa so the same thing mm -hmm. that you were remarking about his his uh his house um and so here's my three sections <laughs> root ties wow. you know, the traditional house of course would step down the veranda yes. is a step down it's not a quarter but it's part of a chan and then if it's a canal side villa yes. like Thompson's, it'll step down further to the water. Um, and then um, the Villa Mazer, that quarter is, is right here that takes you up to the Piano Noble, which is the same level as the grotto. Mm -hmm. And you overlook the farm, you don't know, get your hands dirty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, mm -hmm. um, and here's my quick sketch of this section I find so remarkable at the Jim yeah. Thompson house because um, it, it does have a terrace, not a wood deck. Mm -hmm. And a terrace meaning the earth. Yeah, this is right. Yeah, yeah. To run, right? <laughs> yeah, as opposed to the Thai house, which is a floodplain. Uh-huh. Right? 
And so, I always wonder why this is not the wooden deck. <laughs> well, I think maybe he was doing flood protection, but I think it's it's it it is um it's his Italian side. He it's coming from this European tradition. Um, mm. And I mean, it, uh, maybe that I the, this was before the BMA wall flood protection wall, and yeah, and yeah, when I was living, yeah. I actually built a a storm drain under the canal. They do, there's a huge pipe under mm -hmm. there now. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But um, you know, it's so probably flooded when he was there, so it, it could have acted as flood control as well. But uh, again, it's mm -hmm. a thermal mass. The granny's house had this, and 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 Tup Kwan has has a tree in the middle too. So so I mean, there, there's something mm -hmm. about the terra, and that's why I think this distinction of the Chan being a wooden deck as opposed to a terrace. This is a terrace because it's mm -hmm. of the earth. You know, it's more precise. Yeah, and why I call mm -hmm. that space underneath a grotto because it's in the earth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So um, yeah, there it is again. <laughs> and mm -hmm. you know the those rooms that you saw at the uh, Palladio, of course, are really interesting because the frescoes are all like you're outside. Uh, okay. <laughs> So you don't have windows, you paint. Uh, it's like it, it, this is the reverse because Tim yeah. Thompson transformed window into the nook, but this right. one is a nook. But it it's looks like a window. <laughs> again, it, it's it's the it's it's um an archive of our relationship with nature and how much do we control. Mm -hmm. And so this is a, a vintage picture of um sitting in that grotto. So it was probably the coolest mm -hmm. space in the daytime the the loja mm -hmm. upstairs is is uh closed until the nighttime but the daytime you sit yeah it's too hot for sure because yeah. uh, the the roof has no uh insulation and all that it's truly hot yeah so this must have been a, a quite a cool place for him and again um we i didn't point it out when we looked at this picture but you can see the pile of bricks <laughs> as he's actually building that terrace he's building the earth in a site that had no mm -hmm. earth it's just mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know the, the the sticky earth of bangkok <laughs> the um, sticky soil <laughs> like sticky rice <laughs> yeah. sticky soil they call it yeah, sticky soil. yeah and so niti's drawing um is quite good and it shows i mean you can even see how the terrace has two levels and the way it's carving around the wings mm -hmm. and making the second terrace and then the stairs down to um, where he had a boat dock. So this um, this terrace is the foreign element uh, as well as you know the stair hall in the corridor, the niches. Mm -hmm. And here it is. Mm. And um, just just really quickly, I want to pay homage to uh, my late professor David Coffin and all he taught me, and which continues to inspire. So his history of the Roman villa is that it's a it's architecture dissolving into nature, because the first one is Villa Farnesina, which is suburban. It's in town. It's near the Vatican, um, in Trastevere, and. Um, um, and it has this giant loggia, the stairs and corridors behind, um, and the two wings. And then in the site plan, you can see a palace would face the street, but this is in a vineyard um, that exists. Mm -hmm. So there's like people growing grapes there. And this guy, Chigi, he's a Sienese banker um, coming in and wants to please the Pope because he wants to deal with the, the church. His banking is mm. <laughs> important for the church. Mm. So um, the frescoes all are to his great glory. You know, he builds his late in life. Uh, the Pope gets to visit once or twice. He dies. And it's there. You go visit it now, 500 years later, right? <laughs> and see this allegory. <laughs> That's cool. You see this allegory of this moment in time of, of reconciling um, what I'm saying, urban and nature. And... Um, patronage and labor and the dis I call it the disappearance of labor because of the design of the villa and so it's interesting you enter 
the view is to the river, the Tiber River, and you have to go right. And the and and the courtyard is used for theatrical displays at night, and the uh, loggia is is like the stage for those. And then there's a secret garden in the back. Um, yeah, so um, I described the drawing room of the Jim Thompson house as a loggia. I, I think it's a loggia, mm -hmm. and the, that's the the villa mm -hmm. type that has that quality of inside outside that you're describing. Um, the next on um, this disillusion of of <laughs> the architecture into nature is uh, it's a casino in Villa Farnese in Caparola near Viterbo. Um, it's up in the hills, um, so it's cooler. Mm -hmm. So like like Rama uh, for building Patamon Palace to get out of the heat of the Grand Palace in midday, they go out there for the day. This is this is a sort of you know a cooling off like in the summer months and so they they come up here and, and this this is the cardinal uh from the farnese family again who builds it for a papal visit um and you can see the loges on the second floor and you go up a a, mm -hmm. a a stair and so the water that i talked about in palladio becomes a theme that it's it's really displayed um, and is the center of the axis. You don't walk in the center. The water is the most important thing. It's on axis. And so you're always in an axial structure, but you're always walking off axis. Um, and, um, and what's important is that that second floor loge is on, again, the terrace level. So there's a raised ground. And so you go up the water stair to a forecourt where you have this theatrical display. You could have dinner up here. And this is a design, dining pavilion. This was just to have a cool and it's, and okay. it's in, a, in a forest. So it starts from mm -hmm. sitting in this suburban lot, flat, it starts to dig in. So the, the building becomes a terrace. The building is earth, it starts to become earth. And the loggia mm -hmm. is a sort of cave, you know, carved into the earth. And this um, nice image. Yeah, this is from um, Warren's book, House in the Claw, and he commissioned these beautiful and you really get that sense of this is an evening space and a dining space. And so um, like that Roman villa, um, it's to have a, a, a catered meal. <laughs> um, and uh, I'll, I'll set up. And so the, you know, it, it, it just, is it a Thai house or is it an Italian villa? That's my question. Um, and then something really unique happens. Um, in Villa Lante, very near uh, to Caparola and um, Banyaya. It's in, I, when I went there, it's, it's super interesting because the tiny little peasant village, you know, is still there and occupied by all the grannies dressed in black. Um, and um, you go through, there's a big forest here. You can see it in the drawing here. Uh -huh. um, and you enter from the top and go down. Wow. And you go down. Yeah. Super amazing. And then you, you're back to the town. And so um, one of Coffin's PhD students interpreted this um, as an allegory of, of um, uh, sort of, um, it's not a Christian allegory, it's classical Roman, it's Virgilian of the sort of sacred forests before humans destroyed nature that you wow. go through and this place has all the allegorical figures neptune and the water god and all that sort of stuff mm. and then you gradually descend it becomes more and more civilized mm -hmm. more and more like architecture nature. yeah and the way they're able to achieve that and this is vignola um is the architect is they doubled so it's like a Thai pavilion. There isn't one thing wow. like hey, gran hey. Granny's house, you know, Granny's house yeah, with two yeah, pavilions. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. there isn't a, yeah. one house in the middle. And so, in each of those, has the loggia, and each of them has the second floor terrace that goes directly to the back garden. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So, um, so again, I'm interested um, in this relationship to the town that after you go through this allegorical visit, after you take the Pope through this allegorical village and serve him a wonderful meal, um, you're facing this peasant village and you're up on the hill looking at the countryside. And so 
I was very interested in Beyond the Terrace, its relationship to Ben Crua. And William Warren's biography describes how the residents of the village would love watching the parties from the boats across from this loggia and terrace where he's having these must, parties. Must, be, must have been very exotic for them, no? Yeah, yeah, they are fascinated. And even after he died, they had a dinner there and everyone came out because they thought Jim came back, you know, so it's, it's, it's really, really quite touching. Um, yeah, so, so every Roman villa has a village. So Jim Thompson's villa has, has been Crua, of course. I never thought of this aspect, but it's uh, it would map perfectly on the shadow. Well, and and I only think of it because Dave Coffin, you know, made me interested in these villas, and his book is about this dissolving of nature. But when I went, I went and talked to the grannies <laughs> who lived in the village. If you just go left, it's this amazing, intact medieval village, you know. So. Um, with with you know people carving knives on the street and knitting and things like that so um with very fresh food and <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah the, here's some snaps of that experience going down the hill um the upper right the mm -hmm. view and you can see how the architecture is disguised you don't see the buildings when you're on the top you just see no. the waters water stair and this is amazing you'll love uh -huh. this um, so the water is coming from the natural spring and the grotto on top in the forest. And then it appears after the water stair in this dining table where you cool the wine. Wow. And, and the spring water in the middle. And so that impressed the Pope a lot, I'm sure. <laughs> and then wow. at the bottom is, is the, the gateway to the <laughs> town and this beautiful island in this square pond that has four bridges. Um, so that's Lante. And um, so I, 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 this is my picture of the house dissolving into nature and he wasn't able to do a, a proper garden design, American garden design and just let the jungle go. And so mm -hmm. um, I, I love this picture too from Warren's book. You know, and here's my thesis. So I was interested in the villa in America. So I, I went to the American South and this is the vernacular, very Thai house, you know, it's, it's wooden beam mm -hmm. wood log cabin but it's this is called a dog trot so you have this veranda and porch in front and then you have this open space called dog truck because you keep the dog there <laughs> but it's like the tai chi oh, okay. it's completely open so this dog trot house is very typical for slave quarters for enslaved people um uh -huh. and so um and then, you know, I kind of put the dog truck in, in a kind of Whitcover evolution of the plantation house. And mm. uh, what's, you know, and, and the dog trap becomes the stair hall. Again, we see it in Thompson. But the most of the southern houses don't have interior corridors. They use the colonnades, the porches for circulation. So again, it's like the Thai house in the sense that I'm, um, you're going from room to room uh, you can go through through, the, through there, outside, but also around on the outside. Yeah. yeah. So these are. So it's also like the, yeah. The, the, all those. Um, how do you, do they they call it colonial house, right? Yes. Yes, and 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 you know Jefferson and inspired by Palladio and and you know and so um, so after you know visiting the Palladio villas, I, I visited this uh, American stuff. And um, my thesis, you can see it borrows from Villa Lante. There's, um, I, I double the plantation house and the plantation house is a ruin and the farm is kind of nature taking over. So they farm wow. in the ruins and the, the old house is a kind of information center, catering. I mean, they, they, there's actually an old chapel ah. here that they use for weddings. Um, and the the ownership of the land is cooperative, and so it's it's uh, the you know the more simple houses on the periphery where the farm used to be on the periphery in the center. So it kind of uses this doubling of Villa Lante and and putting nature forward first, and then takes the whole idea with labor too. And so um, 
it's sort of reversing the the power structure of of the southern mm -hmm. plantation. So that's why I call it, it was deconstruction before the deconstruction show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Um, okay. Oh uh oh. Uh, Okay, in conclusion, I wanted to talk about the villa and the life of modern Bangkok. Uh, the unexpected title of this lecture honors both Jim Thompson's spirit and my late professor, Dr. Coffin's book, The Villa and the Life of Renaissance Rome. Both Thompson's house and the Roman villa are each designed as a medium for personal life rec recreation. Like Thompson's house, Roman villas were built at the end of the lives of their patrons who only occupied them for a short time, yet they still stand as public witness to the promise of personal and cultural rebirth. While the spatial type of villa in the historical period of the Renaissance aren't usually associated with Bangkok, I'm comparing contemporary Bangkok to 16th century Rome in order to make an argument about how a small building driven by a singular pat patron uh, can be a medium to reflect the life and rebirth of a city. Buddhist Bangkok confronting modernity helps us to imagine the Italian Renaissance not as a cultural change, but the possibilities for personal rebirth in the here and now and provide strategies within the present crisis of climate and social in inequity. So um, a contemporary of, of Thompson uh, was Larry, another American, Larry Sternstein. Um, and um, this was the moment that, and um, Piracy will have a lot to say about this, that Bangkok started to map itself. Um, and so this is what his, uh, Sternstein's redrawing of a, one of the earliest maps. And you can see um, Patuan Palace along Klong Sen Sab mm. and how it's just a, a, a short boat ride from the Grand Palace and is is an afternoon retreat um, for the inner court. It's even it's a very private place, so even the women of the inner court um, and the children of the king could have a wonderful splash <laughs> in the pool and and mm. and pay respects uh, to the, at the temple. Um, and so um, and uh, this area was uh, first. Uh, planned by uh, Rama V uh, to be um, uh, the estate and relatives uh, around the palace of the crown prince. You can see um, Windsor Palace in the lower left. Mm -hmm. um, and um, all the fields gridded and, and as um, agriculture, I don't think necessarily rice. And um, uh, the soy kasemsan, the soy's kasemsan are all part of this property, which already has, uh, you know, the Patuan Technical Institute is beginning to appear there. Mm -hmm. This is the site of, of Lotus Tesco. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. and Prapatun Palace uh, comes from uh, this era, Ram, uh, Rama VI, when uh, the property of Windsor Palace is given to Chulalongkorn University. And the founding of Chulalongkorn University, and here we can see um, Rama IV's palace uh, for his, uh, his afternoon retreat with his family, um, and then um, Wat Patumanaram. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, if we zoom in. Uh, you can see Soi Kasemsan one is L shaped. It's sort of goes up and down here. So Kasemsan 2 is about here. You can see some of the houses of Bankrua village. Uh, and you can see the plot that eventually will become uh, Jim, Jim Thompson's residence. But this, um, you know, the aerial surveys that were done for the American planning um, in uh, 1958 uh, show that the city is becoming quite crowded. Um, Again, we can mm -hmm. see how how densely 
populated the in-migration, especially from Isan, the tuk-tuk drivers and the street food vendors are, are um, living in rental units here. Um, and um, and you, 1958 is the year um, Thompson probably has acquired his property. He builds it in 1959. And so you can see uh, the lot in which he will build. Um, so it comes on two. The Pet, uh, um, Windsor Palace is then replaced by the National Stadium. Um, and but, and uh, even, even the Rama Forest Palace, Patumwan Palace, uh, and this has to do with um, migrants seeking and uh, paying, giving alms to the monks, and so the 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 this uh, becomes a crowded slum community um, on the land of, of mm -hmm. what is more a temple complex rather than a palace complex. The palace is is no longer operating, but you can see Srapa Tomb Palace is is maintained. Um, and those fields that we saw in the plan uh, seem to be vegetable gardens. And, and, um, and so it's maintained within its uh, villa setting. <laughs> so I, I would call mm -hmm. Srabatum a villa, you know, in, 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 in comparison, mm -hmm. um, in terms of English terms. Um, and then uh, zooming in again, um, you can see a little bit more the one ray yeah. land that's not adjacent, immediately adjacent. There must have been some driveway to get to the jungle. Basically, it's uh -huh. still the jungle. He had to sort uh -huh. of situate his house in there somehow. But you know, you can see opposite. So this is where I really think um, the essence of Bangkok is villas and villages, urban villages, urban villas, um, and. Um, it, it doesn't have a block structure and a fabric structure like, um, say, uh, colonial cities or European cities or, or what American cities used to be. American cities look like this now, too. Mm -hmm. um, today, uh, you can see the great shopping complexes because what was under construction while I lived there was the, the two SkyTrain lines that meet um, okay. at, at CM Central. So the, uh -huh. yeah, um, and uh, yeah, I was living here while the construction was going on. <laughs> and then the shopping malls, which um, MBK was, was already there and Siam Square was already there, but uh, Paragon and, and um, World Trade Center went bankrupt with the financial crisis, but then Central World Plaza was rebuilt um, in the site of Crown Property site of uh, Patumon Palace. Um, yeah, and so um, Srapatun Palace now has shopping malls instead of the um, vegetable gardens for, in. <laughs> for for income to maintain their good work. Um, and um, so it's the same income. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> different kind of income, but this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a pal the what I was taught by uh, Professor Nang Doi is that. Um, the palace household have had to be self-supporting. The the king would give you land and would build you a palace, but you had to support and contribute to to run it. Yeah, to run to it, run and, it and, and and to contribute to the kingdom. So, um, yeah. So I think um, I'm left with this statement about um, the disappearance of labor. Thailand is still has great ambitions of uh, continuous industrialization with the Eastern Corridor. And now you have a smart city, a multi-billion dollar project that's going to get built. You have Tesco Lotus. I was always fascinated with the relationship between Tesco Lotus and Ben Crua. You can shop through, you can walk through Tesco Lotus and then you see all the cheap plastic products, you know, in the village. So it definitely, um, helps uh, this community have access to things that are usually in the suburbs. Um, and the, the, the soys, the soy I lived in, it's been, these are very gentrific, gentrified now. There's lots of you know, little mm. condos and things being constructed. But, um, but through Ajung Nagno, I was, I was really taught that this, this villa, this palace compound is the sort of um, structure of the city. 
Um, and, um, and if you go along Sukhumvit and all the soy, there, there are still all these bungalows and these compounds. And, um, and so, um, um, and the, the story of migration and, and the creation of urban villages, even before the expansion of the city, Ben Kru existed um, much earlier uh, than the development of this mm. area. So, um, so I, I, I just think there's great hope for a Bangkok renaissance of social justice and uh, contribution to sustainable living in a climate crisis. But it doesn't involve air conditioning, probably. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, is there is there any image you'd like me to stop on? I just like to hear if you have any final comments. Yeah, I I, I think what what was um, the the last part uh, the interesting issue is that actually it's a continue from the previous part that. Uh, you enlarge the context of Bangkok uh, because you were talking about this uh, villa and villages, right? Villas and villages and, uh, and the Roman uh, tradition, you have villa next to villages, but then here also it was like that. And it's in like village, villages, even though it's in the city, but actually I always say that Bangkok, it's, uh, it's actually a village, mm -hmm. like small villages together. It's the way people still live in the city. It's pretty much like living in villages, not really in an urban area. Even now. New York so, is the same, I think. <laughs> <laughs> especially now. No, I, I, especially yeah, that people I, aren't commuting into the business district anymore. It's like you just stay in your neighborhood, you know? Yeah, and um, no, no, also the way the way people in Bangkok use the uh, public space, especially mm. in let's say Bangkok area or like uh, less modernized area, they still use public space pretty much like villages. Yeah. Right? So there's no really clear boundary between private and public property. And um, you extend all kinds of activities to the um, to the public because it's more like village. It's not like a clear urban space that this is uh, the prop public property that you cannot uh, uh, occupy or so on. So I think uh, in general, Bangkok uh, has still, still has a lot of uh, village spirits. And um, mm -hmm. even though um, in terms of uh, physicality is the, uh, is disappearing from your you you show us the the, the map throughout uh, different periods and then uh, you see like around uh, Tim Thompson house uh, area Ban Kru is always there but then around it's uh, evolving and now it's one of the busiest uh, spot in in the city and uh, in especially in Siam Square if you go now. Um, on the weekend, perhaps you you could uh, imagine that you are not even in Thailand, in Seoul or something. <laughs> it's look pretty much Korea. So it's uh, it's interesting to see how also the city will will evolve. Yeah, after, no, it's, after it. no, and and um, and I, I, you know, I I was in this. Um, wonderful period there from mid 90s to mid 2000s um, when this transformation began and, um, mm. and I think I do have a one more slide yes <laughs> yes okay so, and this um, is what I'm saying so this, this is, is a real life slide. <laughs> yeah th th this is these are photographs from like 1998 and my soy kasem one and um, you know the old mm -hmm. tree was still a spirit tree the ice the, the ice factory was on the street and they hand carted the ice to the it's shopping centers. He's still, still there. there. <laughs> but think of that. I always liked yeah. that they were really smart because they, I watched them bring the big chunks of ice at night and they slept above the ice at night. Ah, <laughs> so they had air, so cool. they had the best air conditioning and of course the, the food. Yeah. There. Um, uh, hopefully. Our, so our this, back. This this is this is what what I'm saying. Like this is really village life that is still going on in every um a little bit hidden corners of, of Bangkok. 
Yeah, and I think um, it's the essence. And again, it's Jim Thompson's project um, to uh, respect the contribution of uh, you know the villagers to the urban economy. Mm -hmm. And I, I know there's efforts to clear the streets of this mess and be more like a Western city or Singapore. <laughs> and um, but um, this, like you say, I agree, is the essence. Um, I just I just think uh, this has been a great chance for me also to you know to re-articulate um what i stand for as an architect and i can see in going in my own archives how i had this amazing training and exposure to you know the colonial history of architecture the eurocentric mm -hmm. you know uh history of classical architecture and goes to rome and goes to the renaissance and the English and the Americans, you know, learned from Palladio. And, um, you know, and I was of a generation that was inspired to sort of deconstruct that. And um, and that, um, especially in this present moment of climate crisis and real extremes of social inequity because of this stage of neoliberal cap capitalism we're stuck in. And so, um, I, I just, when I went to these places and, and enjoyed the architecture of Palladio and, and the Roman villas, I also really enjoyed being in those villages and talking to people and learning mm -hmm. about how, I mean, and it made me wonder what was life in the village when the, when the Pope arrived, <laughs> you know, this poor right. village. Right, they must have been very excited. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And um, and you have that, you know, in Thailand, you still have a royal family and, and um, that excitement. Um, so um, uh, so I think um, this is, you know, a kind of I, I people who are interested in Jim Thompson and interested in this in Bangkok enjoy this. But I also hope all the architects out there and students are inspired to understand that there's so much architecture can do. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. It's been uh, very interesting and uh, inspiring. And uh, you really gave a lot of uh, almost like a homework <laughs> that we should, uh, we should um, go much further. And uh, I really hope a lot of people would find this uh, inspiring as much as I did. And uh, no. Let's see. 